Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily AMG and welcome to just a chat. Let's just have a chat. It's like a free evening. My husband is at a meeting, so I can just do whatever. And I wanted to do a tag Tuesday, but then I couldn't really find a tag. And there's so many tags that I was like, I'm just gonna have to go back and get into tag Tuesday. So I've gotten out of that, but I wanted to do getting to know me, like me just talking to you without it being about what I read or what I want to read, that sort of thing. I mean, it's still being book related. I did find my lit chat cards from Book Riot. And so I think I'm gonna do some of those because I haven't done that in a while. Sorry, I'm gonna kick off my shoes like Mr. Rogers over here. Look at my shoes, y'all, y'all. This was this is not a shoe video, but look at, look, look. Yeah, yeah, they're everything. They're the most perfect, perfect shoes in all the land. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was like neither here nor there. So one question is how I rate my books, like how I do my star rating system. I definitely wanted to answer that question on a video, I guess, because why not? We're here. I got my tea. Let's do this. So star ratings, they are 100% arbitrary <laughs> because I rate like a cozy mystery differently than I would a literary fiction. I hope that makes sense. If you have a book, let's say that has some sort of outline or formulaic layout, my rating is based more on my expectation of the author, the genre. So take like a cozy mystery, for instance. If it has a good plot, a good mystery, a mystery that I didn't solve prior to, that has a cat in a library. I mean, I'm not hard to please over here. If it has recipes, I love them when they have recipes. It That can get a five star easier than work of literary fiction because the dissection isn't as crucial, it isn't as deep, it isn't as thought out. So, and so I think if you have a cozy mystery, a historical fiction, a beach read, even psychological thrillers have gotten into that where they have some sort of formula, they have some sort of outline. And so, once you've read so many of those, your higher ratings come with you being surprised by the genre, by the author, by the subject matter, by the substance, etc. So that can definitely go both ways. If you have already read this domestic thriller too many times, you figured it out, or they went in and threw in everything but the kitchen sink, those lose stars for me. But when you have a true work of literary fiction where you are dealing with real life scenarios or family dynamics or friendships or just the inner workings of humans, that's definitely where the microscope is honed in a lot tighter as far as, okay, that took my breath away, that's a that's a star, or this has been a snooze, it's lost stars. With those, if I don't connect with the subject, with the subjects, like if there is not, and this is of my lower rating of Nine Perfect Strangers, I just did not have anyone that I connected with. For literary fiction, that is huge for me. I want to connect with the storyline, connect with the characters, put myself in their shoes, or at least just know like, oh, I know someone who has been in that situation, or oh my gosh, could you imagine if you're in this situation? And neither the situation nor the characters were anybody that I was like, wanted to be a part of necessarily. It just, it just did not, tick those boxes for me. Definitely wanted to like answer that question on a video. And plus, I don't think I've ever talked about how I do my star ratings. 
But like I said, it's kind of finicky and it's real arbitrary and it really depends upon the genre. Because the question like, okay, you have all these bee trees and you're like, oh, that was five stars because it reminded you of Emma. <laughs> and then a... And then a literary fiction was really dissected. And that's just kind of how I do my ratings. I go into a book knowing my expectations when it's of a certain genre. And then, and depending upon the genre, depending upon the subject matter, depending upon the author, if it's like an auto buy author for me, then I'm probably less critical unless I'm completely taken aback by how much my expectations aren't met. I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers your question. And, but I would love to know how you do your ratings. If you have a similar rating system that I do, where it's really genre based. <laughs> Definitely the way that the book makes me feel at the end has a lot to do with that. So if I am just left on like cloud nine or like sobbing my face off you can guess that that's probably going to be like a four or five star read for me because it's like impacted me so much so yeah i i don't know and honestly there are definitely times when i don't even read a book because i'm just like i loved it okay on to the next thank you next all right, so I'm going to get some lit chat cards. These are from Book Riot. I actually got them on Amazon, and they are conversation starters about books and life. I used to bring these to book club, and then I forgot. I need to get back into that habit because it's so much fun, especially with a group like your book club because you already talk about books and life as it is, but these have a lot of questions about like your childhood reading or just other reading that you've done throughout your life that your book club wasn't a part of. And so... They're just hello. So they're a lot of fun to do as a group for sure. All right. So let's get into this. These have like categories. I'm not sure if I grabbed one of each or one. I don't know. I just grabbed like five cards. Okay. So Kindred. And it says, <laughs> have you ever been part of a book club? Why? Yes, I have. And we are going to start our sixth year this year. Is that right? Our fifth year? Sixth year? Oh my gosh. We're going to start on our sixth year this year. Is that right? Oh my word. I can't remember. Have you ever been, I just read that. What made you decide to join? Well, when I moved here, my girlfriend and I, we sat by each other at work and we both had on headphones and we got talking about books and how much we would like to start a book club. And so we started a book club and here we are five and or six years later because My mind ain't what it used to be. Was it a good experience? It has been a good experience. It has been a roller coaster of experiences. Not all bad, but just anytime you are growing and learning with other women, it is going to be an experience. And it's really what you take from it that's the most important thing. <laughs> Had some falling outs and some ups and downs because we're women growing learning, trying to drive with each other, trying to drive with ourselves. And especially being in your late 20s, early 30s, that's a hard road as it is. And so I am just so thankful and grateful to these women because they have taught me so much because I try to go into every, go in and out of every experience, writing down, I love to journal. So I always try to write down what I learned, what I've gained, what I could have done better, and I just try to be a better person the next day. And book club has made me a better person. Describe your ideal book club. I'm in it, girl. Would you, oh, who would you invite to join, dead or alive? Oh, we would so, I want Oprah, I want Reese Witherspoon, I want Nora Ephron. Who else do we want up in our book club? Maybe like Bethany Frankel. Yeah, we could get down. We could get down with some with some. We could have some guests, some celebrity guests up in book club and we would have the time of our lives. What books, what kind of books would you read? 
We read everything. It runs the gamut. Usually psychological thrillers, mystery thrillers, literary fiction. We have read some nonfiction. We, we really read a lot. War and Peace. This is another op-ed. Is there a book you've never read but tell people you have and why? No. That's not fun. Is there a book that you're embarrassed to admit that you have read? No, girl. And I'll tell everybody, I love Twilight and Fifty Shades, so I'm not embarrassed. No regrets, okay? Choose your own adventure on the road. If you could accompany any fictional character on their journey, quest, voyage, or adventure, who would you choose? Harry Potter. Take me to Hogwarts, please. If you were to go on an epic road trip in your own world, which literary character or author would you choose to be your companion? Dang. Who would I like to come with me? I don't know if it's just because I just finished the eighth Shopaholic book, but like seriously, Rebecca, Brandon, Nay, Bloomwood, really any of Sophie Kinsella's characters, because I think we would just laugh a lot and have like the most fun. But also Reese Witherspoon wrote a book and she's not a fictional character, but she's in her book, if you know what I mean. Like, so like Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Always Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> All right, another choose your own adventure. You are shipwrecked on a deserted island, all alone. As debris washes ashore, you spy a sealed trunk. Inside, there's a single book. What book is it? I hope it's a complete bound edition of the Harry Potter series. If not, just please be, uh, just please be that. Well, if not, it could be 112263 because I will never tire of reading that. Or maybe even American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, the Goldfinch and or The Secret History by Donna Tartt because, well, those are basically my top five favorite books of life. So just any of those, I'll be fine. After spending time on this island, you discover that, in fact, you are not alone. That would be my look. You've been marooned with one other literary character or author. Who would you want to share your island with? Ooh, or author. I don't know. That's hard. I would say the late Nora Ephron would be like, She's just my everything, but if maybe like J.K. Rowling, no, Gillian Flynn, that's who I want. We're on this island, Gillian Flynn. We're going to write a book. All right, op-ed, the last one is To Kill a Mockingbird, also one of my most favorite books. What popular book or series will be read for generations to come? I hope it's To Kill a Mockingbird. What makes you think so? It's just, it's just necessary. And it's so beloved. And it's so beloved for a reason. Is there a popular book or series that will be unknown in 20 years? Sadly or rightfully so? In 20 years? Heck, I don't know. I don't even know if kids, do kids still read like Babysitters or Goosebumps? Or I see, I do see Goosebumps sometimes. I think the movies have helped that come like a reprisal. I don't know. Probably like Animorphs. Like, I don't even think anybody even remembers Animorphs at this point. I don't know. Probably Fifty Shades. Ain't nobody reading Fifty Shades in 20 years. It'll probably be way worse. <laughs> Whatever. Smut will always be around. But hey, I'm not bashing it. I finished my thingy with boppers. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. I hope you learned a little bit about me. I will definitely be back to do some Tag Tuesdays in the future. And I might even bring back Top 5 Friday. I definitely want to bring back Top 5 Friday to the blog. I got all kinds of ideas. Y'all know how that goes. So have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again soon. Bye y'all.